What's up guys, it's Kelly from How to Root. This is Lesson of the Week, a show where we release a new surf tip every single week. If you're new here, subscribe now. What? Something like this one. On the way, then looking. Today we're going to be talking all about rail game. Let's go. Let's hit the water. Now having a strong rail game not only looks cool, but it helps us progress into more advanced manoeuvres like rotations and airs. As we spoke about in our first film, all turns in surfing essentially are started first with our eyes, then with the use of our feet. Manipulating the surfboard to rock back and forth while you stand results in changes in direction on the wave. Speed generation, roundhouse cutbacks and all the way up to hardcore rail turns like this are all variations of how we use our feet to change direction on a wave. But let's explore it further. But it's not just our feet that help us turn on a wave. Our whole body will react in a kinetic chain of events which allow us to do the turn. The first step in putting your board on rail is identifying your section on the wave, then looking and pointing towards that section to decide where you want to be. Remember that really important rule that Taj Burrow talks about, look where you want to go. So let's break down some rail turns from start to finish using some examples. Notice here how the surfer first looks to the section and then commits to his turn. His body follows. In this example, because he is on his forehand, his weight moves towards his toes and his body shifts off center as well, assisting him to move up the face of the wave. Notice also how the surfer is low and compressed here, like a coiled spring ready to release. His leading hand points to the section and then he begins to initiate the radical change in direction, which will become the overall cutback he is about to do. At this time, the surfer begins to extend his body to release the power of the coiled spring into the turn. His head, shoulders, hips, and then lower body rotate sharply back towards the other direction to force the turn, whilst using the natural shape of the wave to assist. I just had to pause it there and talk about someone who does this incredibly well, someone who exemplifies the art of rail game, and that is John John Florence. So let's break down a turn by John John um, from the Margaret River contest in 2017, I think. Um, this particular turn exemplifies what I think is just perfect rail surfing. Okay, so this is where John obviously takes off. He's eyeing the section. Remember we talked about just here, look, his eyes are um, looking at the section that he wants to hit. Now he'll go into a coiled spring. There's the coiled spring. Look how low he is on the way there. His left hand is actually grabbing his side rail, almost. I don't know if he actually is grabbing it. But this is a really solid, really powerful wave. He wouldn't need to be that low in order to do like a regular turn because he's got so much speed coming from the the wave itself. But the the level of commitment which John brings to this game is 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 just unmatched. Getting that low and building up that much extra speed whilst on such a solid wave really sets him apart and really enables this coming turn. Have a look. The body shifts, the coiled spring is released. Boom, look at that, the body extends. His body is almost dead flat on the water here. <laughs> and he's in one of the most critical positions that you could be in for a cutback. This is mental, absolutely mental. Boom, and doesn't even get to finish the turn because he's going too fast. 
Um, this he is probably one of the best in the world at displaying this turn. Okay, back to the video. Let's have a look at a backside rail manoeuvre. The same principles apply, however, the surfer leans onto his heels first. Good surfers will always closely monitor the section on the wave that they've identified, keeping their eye on the target. This way they can actually adapt their turn to best suit that particular section. This is really important in a rail turn where the wave will actually largely dictate the type of turn that we do. For example, on a very steep section of the wave, it's more likely that you'll actually lose your grip with the fins on the wave. Now, this can be risky, but it can also be really cool. And surfers like Julian Wilson, for instance, often take advantage of this phenomenon when doing their turns. You'll find that they slide their fins out and do a more radical turn. More risk, more reward. As you start to do more and more rail turns, you'll start to feel which turns are appropriate in which sections on a wave. Essentially, all rail maneuvers are the same, just with varying degrees of directional change. Let's have a look at the roundhouse cutback, which is essentially a two-part version of the turn we just looked at. You'll notice here that there's two directional changes, one on the forehand and then one on the backhand. Let's have a look at some examples. In a roundhouse, the surfer performs a standard cutback turn, but then also performs a rebound turn off the lip behind him, harnessing two radical direction changes in the one manoeuvre. This is a great turn to perform when you find yourself with a slower, fatter section and want to kill some time whilst waiting for the wave to get steep again. But that can also look incredible performed on a fast, steep section as a radical manoeuvre. I have to just pause it here one more time and have a look at an example of an incredible roundhouse cutback. Okay, so this is Taylor Knox. Look how loaded he is in this position here, really low. His right hand is actually grabbing the rail here. Look, this is an old school version of, actually, no, it's not even an old school version. It's just an old school maneuver. And Taylor is someone that who does it really, really well. Still, in this day, he's extremely relevant in terms of his rail surfing. So this is a really good example of a complete directional change. So see how his, his hand actually came off the rail there as he sort of adjusted and he's holding a really solid line. Look at this line here and his um, inside his heel rail is actually dug into the face of the wave. So they've got the one change there and then his whole body. See that twist, that really strong twist that he just performed um, through there. Let's see if we can watch it again. So watch his body twist, there it goes, and there, bang. So he's almost turned it into two separate turns, which is what we're kind of talking about with the roundhouse, but he's linking it together really smoothly. And just look at this solid rebound. Bang, that, that's almost like a full backside um, re-entry. That is a very tricky maneuver to do, and he is someone who exemplifies, I think, one of the best roundhouses in the business. All right, back to the video. On really steep sections of a wave, a roundhouse or a cutback isn't always appropriate, so that's where something like a blowtail or a re-entry is better. The reality of these types of turns though is that they often result in a loss of speed, far greater than that of something like a cutback. As we've mentioned in previous videos, building up your speed points and then using them is a fine art, and we find that the best surfers are those who spend wisely. Let's break down a good low tail re-entry for you. Notice that this section has a little white water on it and is not really appropriate for a cutback style turn. The surfer identifies the section and initiates the change in direction to approach the section at a much steeper angle than he would for a cutback. He remains low in the coiled spring position, ready to release that pent up energy on the lip of the wave. This part here is incredibly important. 
the surfer must now kick out the tail of the surfboard so that the fins release out the back of the wave. The crux though is that if he does it too much he'll lose momentum and fall off the wave, too little and the surfer may nosedive or just look lame. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel or let us know in the comments what else you'd like to see on the show. This is How to Rip Lesson of the Week where we release a new surf tip every single week here on YouTube. So make sure you subscribe. We will catch you soon. See you guys.